in 2020, 2020 when COVID came and then churches were closed, we, we were not preaching anywhere. We were only doing online. And then we asked ourselves, how are we going to survive? Then we, we sat down as a family and we decided, let's go back to farming. I think Kenyans these days, they have started to adopt on eating of chilies and something like that. But for us, we are doing them for international markets. In, in my schooling background, I did agricultural economics in the university. And that has helped me to do a lot of uh, farming. So anyone can be able to do this business, wherever you are, even if you have a quarter an acre, you have an acre, and also large farms, they can be able to do it and they can earn an, an income from it. Karibuni sana. This is a Canaan land. This is our farm. This is our home. And we thank God that we've been here for 15 years. We have uh, planted quite a different variety of fruit, uh, fruit trees. We plant fruit trees to the farm and we have done quite a lot by the help of God. Bishop Kamaru is my name and Bishop Grace. We are so much uh, glad to have you. Karibuni sana, hapa Canaan land. And we are so excited. In 2020, when COVID came, and then churches were closed, we, we were not preaching anywhere. We were only doing online. And then we asked ourselves, how are we going to survive? Then we, we sat down as a family, and we decided, let's go back to farming. And we, find that, we found that God was inspiring us to go back to farming. That's when we started uh, exporting French beans, chilies, and having vegetables and other. Of course, uh, we, have, we, we planted carrots, we have uh, watermelon and so on for the local market. When we came here, the land was very dry and it was just, there was nothing here, only some shrubs. But uh, because of our desire to live in a place where the environment is green, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's good, the air is okay, we planted fruit trees here and uh, as you can see, we have quite a lot of fruits. We have mango trees, uh, fruits. We have uh, a white supporter tree. We also have different type of mango trees. We have uh, lemon and uh, all, uh, quite a major different type of trees. We have them here and uh, we enjoy a lot of fruits. This place is very dry, but we drill the water. We actually, we prayed and God showed us a place. We, we drill, we have a lot of water, 230 meters. That is what has turned this place to be different from uh, our neighbors. Without water, it's difficult to change a place. But for you to conserve, you need water. The first thing you need to, somebody said, when you buy land, the first place to build a house, look for water. When you get water, then build a house. Uh, that's quite interesting. But we thank God that that water is able to transform uh, the farm that we have in. We are planting uh, horticulture. Uh, we have chilies for export and also for local market. This is Canaan chilies, and uh, this is uh, one of the best crop that we have here. These chilies are for export, as you can see them, and they are very beautiful. Uh, one of the ad uh, advantages of farming chilies in Kenya, because in Kenya, we also have a, a lot of local markets. 
because I think Kenyans these days they have started to adopt on eating of chilies and something like that. But for us, we are doing them for international markets because there is so much market in the in Europe and other countries. Uh, you know, in America and other countries, and the demand is so high because they use chilies, and you know, chilies can be used for food and also for medicine. One thing about chilies, chilies is like a shirab, as you can see it, and uh, a shirab doesn't need a lot of water. So for chili, it needs uh, warm climate, warm climate, a little bit warm, a little bit hotter, and uh, when it's under a shed net, it does the best, and we feed it with the water for the drip line. But when it is, it's uh, cold season, it is a little bit retards, doesn't grow as fast as we can see now, because this chili is only four months, and already we are started to harvest. It's, it's doing very well in this climate. Um, initially, when we started chili, we started the chili that uh, we plant outside because, as you can see, these chilies are inside a, sh a shed. This is what we call shed net. We were planting them outside. We were having local markets and also international markets for some people who come. But uh, there are conditions that uh, you could not, we could not meet so much for international markets because of the regulations that are there. And uh, when I, uh, through my local connections, I ended up getting another international company where I supply chilies for them for export. Their standard is that their chilies must have to be on a shed net or on a greenhouse, but the shed net is best. And uh, the advantage of the shed nets, as they have taught us and educated us on, is that uh, the control of pests is very easy. The control of climate. You can imagine here we are feeling a little bit cooler, but outside is hotter because of the shed. So we control the climate because we're in the shed net. We also control the pest. The outside world doesn't enter so much in. So even spraying and controlling a disease is very easy. And then uh, the crow go, goes faster than when it is outside. We have a... Uh, uh, systemize our farm like we have drip line drip irrigation uh, we are heading into automated irrigation uh, as you can see we are using the drip line so so much of our farming in Canaan we do drip line and as I said it's a warm crop but it needs uh, a lot of water not mushy but enough water for it so and uh, when we have planted them we will plant them there are quite some two drops here, the two holes here, then the third one, then there is a gap for the next one. For the water now to be able to supply, because it has a lot of roots, so it, the water goes direct to the, to the plant itself. And that's how it gets its uh, water. And we put water morning and evening if it's so dry, but when it's a little bit wet, we put only once because it doesn't need cold, a lot of coldness. Then we also feed through the drip lines because we do um, feeding uh, of some of the, of the fertilizer. We do them uh, through the drip line so that it goes direct to the root, but there are others that we do the spraying when we have to feed and also you know, put fertilizer in others. And those that we feed direct also to the crop itself. For you to pick chilies and other things, you need massive workforce. We employ up to 30, 40 at times when the harvest is bamba harvest. Sometimes we have a bamba harvest, you need more people. And you need also skilled people. So you keep even training them every day for you to be at par with other farmers. Otherwise, uh, without information, training and management, things can be very difficult. In, in my schooling background, I did agricultural economics in the university. And that has helped me to do a lot of uh, farming. I was working in farms. I worked for various uh, people. And I learned that uh, agriculture is evolving. It's, it's, it's always, it's te now it's, te it's, it's technical. You need a lot of technology.
we have a gap in agriculture. As much as they say they have given us fertilizer, they have subsidized, but you know it's not enough. Even if they give us the seed, they give us the fertilizer, but we need the education. We need that agriculture officer to visit our farm, educate us on how we can be able to do them better. So we are depending on uh, private organization. There is a school in Isinia that teaches about uh, farming, and that's part of where we go for training. And also the company that uh, we are working for, that has hired us, they also send us the trainers. So they have kept us training and training. So if the government can close the gap, and they themselves, they come, they train the farmers on the ground. I think we can do much better because we, don't, we, don't, we are not charged for the training so that we can be able to train as many people as we can. It, it's not so much expensive to do chilies. You can be able to, to, to do chilies wherever you are. So anyone can be able to do this business, wherever you are, even if you have a quarter an acre, you have an acre, and also large farms, they can be able to do it, and they can earn an, an income from it. For us, it has become our business. Apart from what we do in the ministry, we also do this, and it helps us to be able to live better, take our students to school, and be able to feed the world, because our chili is from here in Canaan, in Kenya. It is feeding the, the Europe world and they are enjoying our crop. So that means we can be able to feed the world with our smallness as we grow bigger and bigger and we do better. And you'll be smiling as you go to bank, put your money and you enjoy yourself. You are so much welcome.